So, um, welcome to another Lure Fishing for Rass UK video. Um, well, today's video isn't from the UK and it isn't about Rass. Um, this is all about a trip to Costa Rica that I came back from at the end of January. Um, the trip was with um, five other anglers and our guide Dave Lewis, who you may or may not have heard about, but he's a totally accomplished angler. Um, it was through, uh, we were actually staying and the fishing was organised with a company out there called CR Fishing Week, which is Costa Rica Fishing Week. Um, it's in the little village of Samara in the um, province of Ganacasta. So this holiday was originally booked in 2018, but a certain disease happened, as we all know, and it took until 2022 to actually get out there. So a long, long time. Um, I tried to do some research um, going before the holiday actually happened as to what I would need, but through searching YouTube, I couldn't find, hopefully, the answers I'm going to give other people for doing a trip like this. If you've never done anything like this, there just wasn't the information that I wanted out there. So hopefully this information, this video is going to give you what you need to know. So the fish we were fishing for, we were fishing for rooster fish, which is, uh, it's not a member of the Jack family, but it sort of looks like it. Some people say it is, but it's not. Um, a very distinctive fish. It's got seven rays to its dorsal fin. Um, they fight, fight like hell. <laughs> uh, very impressive. Um, they can grow to that big. We didn't quite get them that big, unfortunately. But um, So they were the prim a primary target. Uh, secondary was a Kubera snapper. Um, these fish have a serious reputation of flying up from the depths. They'll grab your lure and they're taking it straight back down to its rocky layer. And you won't get it back. You probably haven't got strong enough tackle to, um, to tame them. Well, I'll come on to what I was using that should have tamed them. Um, the other fish we would be catching out there would be jacks, jack Ravel. Uh, there's also big eye jacks, um, not that we caught one, but also horse eye jacks as well, I believe. Um, there were uh, Spanish mackerel, um, so they're the famous snippy snippy fish that will just bite through your line because they've got jaws like that, unless you're lucky, and you will see hopefully later on that I was lucky. Um, and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, if you were going offshore, um, there's chance of marlin of various types and mahi mahi. Um, so there were some big hard pulling fish. So rods, um, from what I could find out, it was a matter of finding what size lures we're going to be taking. So the way I'm going to do the rest of the video is in um, the, the, the various bits of tackle. So I ended up taking three rods. So this is the first one. If I zoom in like that, you should then be able to see what it can do. So this is unfortunately discontinued now. This is a Shimano um, Osea BB heavy game. It is seven foot six long. So as you can see, this rod will cast up to 150 grams. This is a beast. Um, I thought to myself, if I catch a Kubera, once I, once I bought this rod, if I catch a Kubera, if, I, if there's a rod I'm going to land it on, it's this. Unfortunately, I didn't catch one. But it caught nevertheless. So that was my heavy setup. So this is going up to 150 grams. The next one, I, I tried I tried various medium weight rods. Um, I know lots of people like the Shimano STC range of rods. To me, they didn't feel quite right. They, um, even though their ratings are good and strong, um, just personally, I didn't like them. But rods are like that. Some people will love one rod, other people will hate it. So I didn't like it. Um, I've then been searching on uh, eBay for the next rod. Um, so this is a Shimano STC Blue Romance, so different to the current STC range. So that's the information on it there. Now, unfortunately, this rod had been discontinued. I happened to set an alert on eBay and one day eBay pinged up and said, there's a rod for sale. And I looked at it and thought, that's the rod I want. Um, the guy wouldn't take a buy it now price, unfortunately. And I said to myself, well, as simple as that, I want that rod. I put in a stupidly high bid and obviously I won it. Um, so this is my medium weight rod. We cast up to 100 grams. It ended up being the rod I used more than anything else. Um, I did have to modify it slightly um, because of just me and how I am. 
there is a rod builder in Plymouth called Alex Price and you can find him on Facebook. Um, I didn't like the original reel seat so he's put a better Fuji reel seat on there for me. Um, the previous one didn't have any aluminium reinforcements over the end so we had that changed. The handle also finished there, uh, there as well so I had a handle extension put on. As a result of that I've got a lot more leverage to cast like that opposed to like that where there's not much. Yeah, so that might be fine for casting a lure in, in, in this country, but when you're casting a bigger lure, you, you need that extra bit of leverage. So I had the handle extension, really pleased with that. A couple of guys that are guides on the boat were going, oh, whoa, whoa, I've broken it. There's no, it's an extension it's supposed to be. I loved it, it's fantastic. So that was the medium weight one. I did think to myself, that was gonna be everything I was gonna take rod wise. Having had a chat with um, Dave Lewis, he also recommended that I take a lighter rod. So this is the rod that I use if I'm going to, occasionally I go to Tenerife, for example, if I'm fishing off the rocks. So this is a Gamakatsu Achilles, uh, extra, extra heavy. It's not that heavy, but this will cast 60 grams and it will cast 60 grams quite comfortably. Um, I'm really glad I took this because this is what we used for catching uh, Benito to be used as bait and this was perfect for it. So the, the Benito themselves are that sort of length um, compared to the fish we get in the UK. My god these little things pull. We would see shoals of them that would be oh, 200 yards square of pure fish um, and yeah they were fantastic fun. The others were sort of no, let's go fish for the bigger stuff. I could have fished for them all day long. It was just great fun and they really pulled. So that's the rods. Now we'll talk about reels. So I took three reels with me. Um, we start off biggest and go down smallest. So at the time, um, I couldn't afford a Stella. I still can't afford a Stella. Um, I've always been a Shimano man, so I wasn't going to go down the Saltiga route, and I can't afford a Saltiga either. So my next option um, was going to be a Shimano Twin Power. So this is a 14,000 Twin Power. To be exact, it is a SW14000 XGB. This one has since been superseded, um, but this was the big gun. Um, I've modified it very slightly by adding a Gomexus knob to it, so it's got two more bearings than normal. It's sexy. It's not sexy as a Stella because a Stella would spin in the wind, which is really cool. Um, but it's got a, a high gear ratio of 6.2, I believe, to 1. You will find a video d dedicated to this vid this reel um, on my channel elsewhere. So if you want to know more about it, you can find out more about it there. And also the um, after use video. Um, this one had an interesting point in its instructions that came with it saying that it might feel slightly geary at first. It's because the gears are so heavy duty they need to be worn in. So that's Shimano saying that. So that was interesting. It's now, it's, yes, yeah, fantastic now. Um, if I used it a couple more times it would get even more fantastic. Like all my reels, um, every day they get rinsed off, dried. Um, if it's stored for any amount of time, the drag's wound off as well. And obviously I don't keep a spool band on, on there at the moment. So that was the big one. Um, if you've never used a reel this big, it's a big reel. Um, the fishing we were doing, um, when you're casting a reel this heavy and on the, uh, the Osha BB rod that heavy, it's not physically heavy, but casting it's heavy. It's hard work. Um, so for the guys in this country that are doing this, if, if you're a carp fisherman, you might be able to equate to this. If you're casting your spod rod, so a thing full of bait, so it's quite heavy. Imagine you're doing that for eight hours a day, all day, and you're casting as fast as you can. That's what it's like. Um, so that was the big gun, okay? Um, it's got, I believe, 22 kilos of drag. I've got um, P8 line on there so it's got a breaking strain of about 112 pounds if i was going to hook a cabera that was going to get it in so that's the big gun then coming down one range so this is the latest um uh, shimano saragossa it is exactly an sw 8000 hga um, the latest model um, this one yet again i've modified with a, a nice 
um, aluminium uh, geared knob with um, two ball bearings in it. I, they come standard with a sort of a football shaped one which has got grippy rubber on it, but personally I think they're horrible. But anyway, <coughs> excuse me, um, not quite as fast as a gear ratio of this one as there is on the Twin Power. This one's 5.6, I believe, to one. But a nice reel. I first got it, I thought, cool, that's big, isn't it? This was really nice to use. I love this reel a lot. Not quite as heavy physically as the Twin Power, but it was just nicer to use. Liked it a lot. And finally, on the light rod, I took my, my bass reel uh, from the UK. So this is a, um, a Stradic um, a C5000XGL. This is the latest Stradic. Um, just slightly the same size as the 4000, just a deeper spool. And I thought a deeper spool might be more appropriate um, for just in case I hook something that just goes for the horizon but hearing the drag scream on this thing was lovely yeah lovely little reel i can't recommend that high enough would i replace it probably not it's that nice so that's reels one of the things i find myself normally when i'm fishing and i'm holding a reel i'm holding it like that two fingers either side of the stem when you've got a reel this big particularly obviously with the the reel seat and it's double locked up there it was much easier for my right hand to be holding to be holding the line like that and casting like that. It gave me a stronger grip on a rod and a reel that is heavier than I'm normally used to, and casting a lure that I'm heavier that's heavier than I'm normally used to. That was something I learned. I learned that after about day three, um, and I fished that way continuously onwards. If I'm using big stuff again, I won't even think about that. It's going to be that every single time. Something to think about. It might help you a little bit. Um, I spoke to, oh, for what I could find yet again, um, you know, should I take mono or should I take fluorocarbon or both? Um, the guy that has fished there more than anywhere else, anyone else, Dave Lewis, said, just take mono, forget fluorocarbon. Yes, there will be people that will say, fluorocarbon is better, fish can't see fluorocarbon in the water. Well, I can see fluorocarbon in the water, so I'm sorry for them saying it's invisible. Personally, I think it's a load of rubbish, but that's my choice. Um, I did take a spool of um, fluorocarbon coated um, leader material in 50 pound, because I was told, no, no, you can't fish too heavy, They'll, the fish will see it. So I, I used it. Um, my knots I trust 100%, trust I'll put my life on them, and this uh, fluorocarbon coated um, mono broke and I lost a fish and unfortunately I lost a fish with my lure in its mouth. As I only use barbers hooks I hope that fish has managed to shed the lure and there's some lucky bugger out in uh, Costa Rica who's found himself a nice popper. But then anyway going back to it so then what, what did I do? From what I've seen online not about Costa Rica but um, from the morning tide guys actually out, out in Australia and the various places they managed to fish I ended up using um, Varabas Ocean Record um, in three breaking strains, so there's 70 pound, 100 pound, and then the big boy, 180. Um, which is nice, they come with these spool bands, so you don't get line pissing off the spool when it, once you've stopped using it. It's literally just a matter of pulling and it comes out. So, 70 pound, yes, you can call it overkill, but I used this on my light gear, um, even though the braid was a uh, 30 pound braid. Um, this was my leader, just because some of the fish do have teeth that we don't necessarily get over here. Um, the hundred pound went on my medium set, um, and fairly obviously the big stuff went on the on the big setup. Um, I personally found it made no difference to the fish at all. Um, the fishing we had out there was difficult. Right, so yeah, the actual fishing it was tough. Um, first day. Um, I had my first rooster, which was fantastic. Um, you'll see a, a clip um, at some point in, in the video of my uh, Sarago. So you can't read the print on the spool because it's blurred because the, the line was pissing out. It was great. <laughs> they were really pulling hard. Um, then the second rooster I, I caught, as I said earlier on, um, the leader broke. And it was like, what? Couldn't work that out. The only thing we could think of was it might well have been a Spanish mackerel that also saw the, the popper and went for it, and that's what actually cut the line because the, the knot didn't break. Um, but it was an El Nino year, so unfortunately we, we had a lot of red tide. 
um, and this took two or three days for the guides to um, work out where the fish were with relationship to this red tide. It was awful. There were just huge patches of red algae in the sea. Um, we eventually found that if we went as far south as we could and um, before the tide changed and then worked our way back, as long as we were ahead of that algae, we could still be catching and we were. But we had had a few fish, but it had been hard, hard work. Um, it was 30 degrees out there, um, you know, you're, you're completely covered up, um, but it was hard work. So the day four, uh, we decided to go offshore. Um, our plan was the three of us on our boat um, were going to be looking for yellowfin tuna busting on the surface, um, and we would be casting poppers to them, which we were all keyed up for, ready for that, and the crew got the trawling gear out and saying, no, 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 we're trawling for marlin which we didn't really want to do. Um, at one stage, um, first rod went off, one of the guys took it. Um, he lost a marlin that went underneath the boat. Um, then another rod went off, I had a female mahi-mahi. Um, then another one went off and I then had a male mahi-mahi. So uh, the female was about 10 kilos, the bull was about 15 kilos. I've seen on um, various bits on YouTube the difference in their shape, the heads, the shape. The bull has got a very, a very, very square um, forehead, if you like, whereas the female is more sloped. So they're really obvious. But electric colours, unfortunately, they as soon as they die, they lose their colours. I say die because as much as everything was catch and release, um, those were kept to be eaten and they tasted amazing. Um, I did finally get to hook a marlin. Um, the rod went off, one of the crewmen gave me the rod. Um, we saw this explosion in the distance as line was pouring off the reel. Um, I was looking down at the reel saying, I'm gonna get spooled, I'm gonna get spooled. I literally held on as tight as I could. I braced myself against the, the gunwale of the boat, waiting for this knot to break. Eventually the line came down to the knot on the spool. It had taken that much. Yeah, this was pretty serious. Sweat was pouring off me. The crew said, wind, wind, wind. I wound and wound and wound and I was getting the line in and I was thinking, blimey, I might actually land this. I was still winding, glass of water, still winding, and eventually I got the double leader knot onto the spool. By this stage I could see that the leader was going into the water sort of just behind the two outboards. The fish shook its head three times and I'm surprised you didn't hear me swearing in the UK. I lost it. Disappointing to say the least. Um, but anyway, that, that's, that's what the fishing was like. Um, it got better. Um, on our last day, the fishing was literally off the scale. Um, it was fish after fish after fish after fish after fish. For me, it was just roosters. Um, some of the other guys had roosters uh, and jacks. Um, one guy that went out there, he was desperate to catch a rooster and he literally caught his first rooster on the last day. It was his only rooster, unfortunately, but he, you could see the relief in his face. Uh, yeah, we fished hard. So with regards to braid, it was a long um, thought out choice as to what I take braid wise. I needed to be careful from the point of view that if I hook something serious and I couldn't stop it, and if I got spooled. So I took spare line as well. Um, so on the heavy setup, uh, from Terry at Gigabyte, I used Tasline Elite, so this is PE8, um, so in theory it's £80, but as PE8 it has an actual breaking strain of 162 because that will make a difference, <laughs> pounds. Um, this is a 600 yard spool, it was 120 odd quid, very expensive, but I got not quite 300 metres on the twin power of this meaning that if I did get spooled, I could re-spool while I'm out there and not be down at all. 
Um, Tasline, it's expensive. It is very, very, very good. It's really quiet. It's an eight strand. It's not coated. Um, I can't say anything negative about it to the point that I've now gone over to Tasline for everything. Um, I've, if I find a negative, I'll do a video about it. But this stuff is good shit. Um, so PEA on the big gun setup. I didn't bring this ball downstairs, but it'll be the same sort of thing. Um, then on the medium setup, I then went with PE4. So in theory, 40 pound braking strain, but it's got a braking strain of something like 60 something rather pound on actual tested braking strain. So that was the PE4. Um, and finally, on the um, light one, light setup, it was PE1.7, which has got a 30 pound of braking strain. And yeah, they were perfect. So that they were the lines I used. I did have spools of braid with me um, in case I got spooled on either of the other two reels. So I managed to get a P4 spool, 300 meters of it, um, I think on offer from Mr. Fish in Jersey. So that was useful to take, didn't cost me a lot. Um, and I had an old spool of braid I could have put on the um, small setup um, in case I got spooled on that. Um, so that's braid. So most of the fishing I do in the UK, I've used a modified Albright knot. Um, but you know that that's with a, li uh, a leader of 25 to 30 pound braking strain, something like that. Well, as I showed you earlier on, um, for the stuff I was doing up there, I was going up to leader braking strains up to 180 pounds. I had to learn to tie an FG knot. Um, I'm because the trip got cancelled so many times. Um, I learned to tie one, and I got it to the point that I had a mate of mine, Adrian Evans, the constant angler, who's my crew, uh, cameraman today, um, come round and we, we held this um, PE8 braid and 180 pound uh, leader, and we both pulled on it. We both pulled on it so hard, we both said, no, nah, that's not gonna break, so I was happy with that. So my leader knot, my FG knot, is that. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the way I've tied it. I'm happy that it won't come undone. However, I found a problem with it. So one of the problems I, I found with the FG knot, even as you saw earlier on as to how small I trimmed my tag end to, every now and again, the knot would get caught like that on the tip ring. Um, and when you're winding in with the power of this gear, there's a lot of pressure on that knot being pulled in. So I had to let line out then to be able to wind it in. It would cast without a problem at all. It's going to be virtually impossible for me to show you. Oh, there you go. I've caught it live like that. I hope this shows up Whoops, well enough. But that happened. Um, as much as I trust the knot from its breaking strain point of view, it's something that made me think, oh, OK, do I want to use that knot again? I personally would, for my next trip, whenever that's going to be, I'm going to see how I get on tying a PR knot and see if I can make a PR knot smoother at the end. So, so my FG knot, I finish with, a, do a risotto finish on it. Um, I think I've seen PR knots, that once the knot is finished, it then carries on down the braid a little bit so you don't get any form of a ramp. But just to reiterate, that... Is how small my tag end is so pretty damn small yeah I could cut it a tiny bit smaller but I'd like something there for always the just-in-case bit if you've got any comments I'll be interested to hear them uh, but I'm going to try the PR knot for future stuff